Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Welcome back to another edition of Real Answers with Christopher Anderson. It airs Wednesdays during the Noon Report. We tackle the tough topics facing today's families with licensed mental health counselor Christopher Anderson. And Chris, this topic has been in the news and apparently is becoming quite mainstream, I guess you could say. That being this whole phenomenon that we call the cancel culture. And well, it's good for us to address as it appears Christians are in the crosshairs. We are, Brandon, that's for sure. And it's definitely not something that is easy to have to face, but it's obviously something we need to address, and especially in light of the need to prepare for how to deal with it when it happens. Chris, a while back we discussed how to deal with confrontation, and I'm sure some of those principles can apply in this situation as well. Oh, absolutely, because that's really what this cancer culture is. It's an intentional confrontation by a group of people that believe that somehow, some way, for whatever reason, they have the right to get in your face and publicly humiliate you or shame you if you disagree with their ideas. That's ultimately what it is. Now, I want to bring that topic of dealing with confrontation again back up for examination today, and I'm glad we are because we're going to increasingly be confronted both directly and indirectly by these people in ideas that fly directly opposed to Scripture. But let's first make sure that we know, again, what's happening when we talk about the cancel culture. And this is a political confrontational strategy that is meant to silence people with whom they disagree with. Now, of course, it is in stark opposition to the idea of free speech and open and civil discourse. But what is troubling and at the same time not surprising is the level at which those opposed to Christian values are ratcheting up their rhetoric and attacks on Christians. They are taking the stance that if you oppose them, this gives them the right to not only verbally attack, but in some cases, as we've seen, physically attack people as well. Mm. So it's their stated goal to try to ruin people that don't agree with them. And this is not only un-American, of course, but it's also potentially illegal. So that begs the question, what can be done when we're confronted by people who do not share or like our values? As Christians, we know that it's laid out in Scripture that that's going to be the case. And that's why I was saying earlier that we shouldn't be surprised by it, even though we're not happy that it's happening, of course. But we need to remember that we're not fighting them, that we are fighting in the spiritual realm. We know this is really ultimately a fight between the forces of good and evil. But what that means in practical terms is that we need to do what we can and not hold bitterness. And, of course, that is easier said than done, that's for sure. But if you're having difficulty with this, for example, I'll just give you an example, like in the job place, if you're being attacked for your values on the job, make sure that you're keeping your faith and faith activities separate from the job that you're being paid to do. An employer is going to pay you to do a job but not pay you to sit around and talk about Scripture, unless you're, of course, doing that on a break or on a lunch break or after work or whatever. That's completely different. But keeping those boundaries where they need to be on the job is a really good idea. But if someone is directly attacking you and you're fully aware that it is not warranted nor provoked as it should be, then you need to document what is happening. Kind of keep track of it. Let your pastor, the elders in your church know so that they can pray, but also they can maybe assist you in deciding on the course of action to take. We're not meant to lash out, but at the same time, we do not have to be floor mats either. So seeking the counsel of many advisors, as we know from the book of Proverbs, is definitely a good success strategy when it comes to dealing with a variety of different applications. So sometimes inviting even a person that disagrees with you over for a cup of coffee, a phone call, is a good way to open up a line of communication as well. But again, if the confrontation becomes threatening, you need to take all threats seriously. We've seen in this cancel culture that for some reason they believe they have the right to intimidate, they believe that they have the right to otherwise threaten if you don't fall in line with their beliefs. Okay, that is not true. That is illegal to do that. So when it crosses into that area, make sure you document those threats and potentially look at what your options are, especially if it starts to involve your family. And by all means, consider involving law enforcement and taking these actions does not mean that you're going away other than what God would have for you. So definitely take all threats seriously. Some people might be wondering, how about in our schools? What should we do if our children are being attacked or otherwise persecuted in the classroom? Your children are entitled to the same rights as anybody. So if it's a bullying case, as we're seeing more and more cases, particularly of teacher and professor harassment or intimidation of students, 
And again, that's all part of this cancel culture movement that has so permeated our universities because of disagreements of belief. Then remember that you can always contact law enforcement for these instances as well if you're not getting any kind of satisfactory action by your school, district, or university. No child or student should have to be afraid of any teacher or administrator. But we know that bullying has always been a problem, and despite the progress that we're making in this area, there is still work to be done. So you are your child's number one advocate and protector as the parent. So utilize the resources available to you, including the support you can draw on from your local church. You've been listening to another edition of Real Answers with Christopher Anderson. It airs Wednesdays during the Noon Report. We tackle the tough topics facing today's families with Christian counselor Christopher Anderson.